Hey everyone and welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we talk about movies on this show. This is March, it is Batman month. Not because it's March, but because it is the 80th anniversary of Batman. Also, the 1000th issue of Detective Comics is coming out this month, and because of that, we have been working our way through some Batman movies over the course of the month. And we got through the two Tim Burton films, we got through the two Joel Schumacher films, which leads us, finally... <laughs> to something yeah, we're, good we're, we're back to some good stuff batman what do you mean back <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting to see how long that took it back no 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 no. back no backs no 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 backs batman begins uh so the franchise was dormant for not even that long by today's standards um but at the time it felt like it had been gone for a while yeah it was like what a decade not quite. It was ninety seven to two thousand five. Okay, less than. Yeah. So, you know, whereas now you expect reboots to happen. Three, like, four years. Yeah, if that, right? Um, you know, but this was like okay. So Batman's coming back after this time. I went into this with like very little expectations. Uh, we, we'll just go full spoilers on this. So full spoiler warning for Batman Begins. I feel like you probably you've seen not. It. Yeah, you've seen yeah. Batman Begins by now. So. Yeah, I, I went into this with like no expectations. Uh, I went into this not being that interested in comic book characters, not because I didn't like them, just because I hadn't really been looking at them f since I was a kid. Because yeah. uh, this came out when I was sixteen, and I went with zero expectations. Then that never heard of Christopher Nolan. Had no, you know had no idea what this movie was going to be like. I just like oh, it's a new Batman movie. I'll try it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, didn't see it opening week. I saw it like maybe after two weeks it was out <laughs> maybe three you know it wasn't like yeah. a quick you know it was like oh yeah sure i'll go see it um i was pretty much blown away it pretty much was like oh oh this was good oh who, di <laughs> who, who directed this oh i think yeah. i like batman like a lot like <laughs> i'm gonna go i'm gonna go look things up and like dive back at the animated series and uh, rediscover my my roots as a because as a, obviously i grew up in batman the animated series like, I had an attachment to Batman as a kid, but yeah. I kind of left that behind, you know, because you, you had, like, 11, 12 years old. Oh, that's too kiddie for me now. I, I like, mature things. Yeah, <laughs> Which, yeah. I'm sure by, you know, my standards now, I'll just probably feel immature to, to the nth degree, but... Edgy teenage mature. Ed, edgy teenage mature, yes. Yeah. Uh, and this was, like... It, it was just... I, I think one of the things that Batman Begins does so well is that it takes the character seriously, and... There is such a thing as taking something too seriously, but I think this movie treats the character with reverence, which I don't think any of the four films did. No, no, they didn't. And I, I got Batman in a way on, in live action that I'd never gotten before. Like, I, I understood the point of Batman. I understood, you know, so so much of what I like about Batman is in this movie. And it's not just so much that I, I learned, like, I already knew who Batman was, but, like... I went and read the first ever comic book I ever read because of this movie. I went and read Batman uh, Year One. It was, it was the obvious place to start, and I started reading more. And what's funny is, like, you know how you know here we are, fourteen years later. Yes, this movie's fourteen years old. Let that sink in. Shit, <laughs> I know time's flying. Um, do, do you know what it is? I'm watching it, and I'm like, I'm looking at some of the CG, especially the narrows. Every time it cuts to like, the skyline of the narrows, and I'm like, I mean, this is not terrible, but yeah, it's looking a bit dated now. <laughs> like. Yeah, and I mean, there's not an overuse of CG in this movie because oh, no. Nolan insists yeah. on doing shit real to stupid degrees at points. Yeah, yeah so he's a practical man. He likes his practic practical effects. But so, so it's been 14 years. I've been reading Batman comics for 14 years now, and this is not a recent realization. This was a realization I had probably before The Dark Knight came out. <laughs> so it was in that first couple of years. But it's like, it's not so much that. I like comics that are like Batman Begins or like that interpretation of Batman because Batman in the comics is still a little bit different. There's there's definitely things we're going to talk about in this movie that aren't quite perfect. There's definitely little things here or there that don't aren't quite the perfect version of Batman, yeah. but the hearts are typically in the right place and it's it's treating it seriously. And but what I'm getting at is that what I like in Batman Begins comes from the comics. It you know like the, what it does well with the character. Is originates from various comic interpretations of the character. It's okay, a cyclical thing. I may have discovered some of what I like about Batman in that movie, but when I went that, that dove into the comics, I was like, I found it was that. Already there. I yeah. found more of that. Um, some of the comics I, I like and dislike, 
you know, so, some of them are closer to that film, some, some of them aren't. Like, there's some wackier Batman I do kind of like, but... Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Uh, my point was is this is the this is the movie that got me reading comic books and given that i i, I am the the co-host of two comic book podcasts now the, it's pretty important yeah it's, it's got something to answer for if you like comics yeah. from the multiverse if you like elsewhere from the multi in the multiverse you can thank batman begins you can thank christopher nolan for for putting me on that path because that's why i'm here today yeah <laughs> there you go Fair enough. Yeah. so but the point i'm getting at is Batman 89, shit. Batman Returns, no. even shitter. Batman Forever, pretty damn shit. Batman and Robin, okay, I'll have fun watching it, but it's still really shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Chill. Anyway, so, Batman Begins, actually a good movie. It is, it is. And, you know, I think it's, you know, we both love this movie, and when you've seen a movie so many times... Like, you know, when we do these reviews, sometimes we do a movie that we have seen a lot of times. Yes. And it's like, okay, now we're trying to find the nitpicks for the sake <laughs> of these discussions, right? So th- there might actually be some sections in this review where it sounds like we're being overly critical. And we're not. It's no, just we're going to yeah. find something. <laughs> Here's something, actually. I-, I didn't notice this myself. Someone, I- This was pointed out to me on the interwebs. So sometime... In the last couple of years, because I've not watched these movies, you know, these Nolan movies in a few years now, I, th- I don't think. And it's the scene, right? So, so it's later in the film. It's the start of Act Four, right? At the party, right? When Razal Ghul yeah. shows up, right? That's the start of Act Four. You have uh, the, this woman who says to Bruce, "Bruce, you must meet this man. How am I pronouncing your name correctly, uh, Mister Razal Ghul?" Like, nothing wrong with that. I'm not. I'm not making fun of her saying that. Watch this scene closely, because she introduces him to this random guy who turns out not to be Raz Al Ghul, right? And then yeah. Liam Neeson pops up behind him, and he's like, because uh, you know, Bruce, looks, you know, right in front of this woman, goes, you're not Raz Al Ghul. Raz Al Ghul is dead. And then Liam Neeson pops up behind him, he's like, yes, but is Raz Al Ghul immortal? Is his ways supernatural? Yeah. Right? And he turns around to look at Liam Neeson. And this woman who introduced him to, to this first guy is just kind of standing there awkwardly for like maybe 10 seconds, and then just kind of walks away. It's it's so weird. It's like this person isn't a person. She's she's just like there for that introduction that makes no sense, and she's not a character. She's just a a cardboard oh, cutout. There's a few things in this movie that stick out like that to me. Uh, now, now, now that I've seen it. In oh times, sure, yeah, that you've seen it a bunch um, of times. Yeah. The whole plot with the uh, the the machine, you know, that that turns the water into the gas, uh, the being stolen. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, you got the other board member coming and going, right, yeah, though, this happened. And then him going down to Lucius and going, hey, you got any information on this? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it feels like, it, yes, it has relevance by the end because we understand, right, where, you know, what it is. Yeah. But it feels so random to have these scenes just thrown in like that. Like, oh, yeah, you need to know this for the plot. This, this, this is coming up later. There's no organic way of it being in there. I've I've always felt that as maybe the the the, the weirdest transition in the movie because it actually transitions from uh, I think I think it's actually the shot of Batman on the the rooftop the gargoyle right after his first yeah. night and it cuts to the boardroom scene where the guy comes in and tells Rutger Hauer like what's going on with the machine and every every time I watch this movie now and it, it, it's that transition to that scene that I'm like. And here's the start of the second half of the movie. This is the whole new plot we're introducing for the sake of the se- now, yeah. It's funny, because I've went back and forth on this. I watched a great video on YouTube, actually, recently, about Batman Begins. And it was talking about how uh, it's split into four, and how each part has its own villain, right? The first one doesn't really have a villain in and of itself, right? It's just kind of Bruce being, you know, becoming Batman, right? It's yeah. him finding himself. The second part is him fighting Falcone. The third, which, by the way, they say Falcone properly in this movie. I, I yeah, applaud that. Yeah, but they don't say Raish properly, so, you know, yes, swings and roundabouts. No, no, Raz Al Ghul is the correct pronunciation. I will fight you on this. <laughs> swings and roundabouts. So, and then the third part's uh, Scarecrow, fourth part's Raz Al Ghul, right? That, that's the, the, the breakdown of the movie, right? Um, sure. So, I've come to appreciate the, the, the structure of this a lot more when I sort of think of it as four parts rather than the two parts that I had in my head for a long time. Because in my head it was, he becomes Batman, this plot with the water device. 
starts <laughs> and it was this kind of abrupt thing and well I, I don't you know i'm not i'm not like i love this movie and i love a lot in that second half the transition to it always felt kind of weird like it, was, it always yeah. felt like new movie starting almost at this point yeah it's just here's information i think there's actually more going on that sort of throughout the whole movie than i gave it credit for uh in some okay. ways um because one of the things that i uh i was thinking about is so, so the main theme of this movie is fear. In fact, if anything, one critique you could give it is that they mention the word fear like far too many times yeah, over, over the course of the movie. Arguably underutilized scarecrow when that's your main theme. That's fair. I could, I could have done with more scarecrow. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I think, I think Kelly and Murphy is good. Yeah, all, definitely. But, um, but because basically one, one of the things that like again I didn't notice the first time or maybe even the first five times I saw this is the idea that all of the like the main characters in the movie are using fear in different ways yep. now, scarecrow's obvious right because he's, he's scarecrow right batman's sure. kind of obvious because he's batman but yep. falcone even you know the first time you meet falcone he's talking about how he's he has power over everyone because they're all scared of him and a yeah. sort of crime boss way it is you know when you know when bruce walks in he's like hey yeah i could shoot you here and no one would bat an eyelid because they're scared of me yeah and then Razal Ghul, to a lesser extent, but he's using the toxin at the end to like make everyone scared, so they'll they'll kill each other. Basically, that's his plan. Yeah. That's his crazy cockamamie plan. Uh, uh, Raz is a. I'll concede to call him Raz for the purpose of this film, just because of how mm. they say it. Um, but um, it's a combination of the the scarecrow and the Batman elements of of the fear plot. Okay, uh, kind of, yeah. I, I think what's interesting to me is that the like. Scarecrow and Falcone don't really have any goals, right? Like, they're just like, and they're different. Like, Falcone's, you know, the crime boss, he just wants to control everything. Yeah, yeah, his goal is always just what it always has been existing with the money and yeah. the power. Scarecrow, I mean, maybe he wants power, but he, he, it's more of a manic, kind of like crazy kind of power. Like, yeah, it's. It's an interesting one, because obviously he's working for, for Raz, and Raz is like, well, you know. He thinks we're just going to ransom the city. He wants the power and the money again, uh, similar yeah. to Falcone. Uh, it feels more anar anarchistic. Uh, anar anar is that a word? Anarchistic? I don't know. Anarchy. It feels more like he wants to say anarchy is what I'm trying to say. You know, yeah. in, in a way, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll want the money too, but it feels like he is going to thrive off of the chaos that he's causing. It does. Yeah. Um, and then Batman, of course, uses fear, but he uses fear in the you know. For the, as far as the movie's concerned, and as for what most people would agree with, is the best use of it out of these characters, is he uses it for the for noble reasons. But what's interesting is that Ra's al Ghul also has kind of a goal. He, I mean, it's not noble per se, but he has this ideal sort of ambition in mind. It's it's noble in his mind. In his mind it is, yeah. Uh, but he, he, he wants to use it to achieve something. He wants to use it to... And arguably not for himself... Right, because this, because as much as what he's doing is kind of evil, you never get the sense that League of Shadows are trying to like destroy Gotham or they've destroyed other civilizations out of their own greed. No, as I said, I think they, they genuinely believe it's noble. They think they're doing it for the betterment of the world. Like, okay, no, this has gotten too bad. Let's clear it and start over. And this is where I think the beauty of the film is: is that Batman as a character, the entire message of Batman against that idea is that they want to just scrap it and just, just something new can start. Batman's like, no, recovery as possible, because he himself was broken and has recovered. You go back to the start, one of the things I love about this film, actually, is that he's not that good right away. He messes up. He, he, you know, the, the first time he, like, tries to Batman out the scene from Gordon, you know, Gordon catches him and chases him out of the roof and shoots at him. Yeah, <laughs> like, and he, he kind of messes up that jump over the building. He does, which leads him to go and try and, like, okay, I need a cape, right? <laughs> Lucius, yeah. what you got for me? And... But he, you know, he's, like, but going back further than that, he wants to kill Joe Chill. He's obsessed with revenge. And one of the things I hate about the TV show Gotham is that, like, four days after the death of the parents, young Bruce Wayne's like, I have to conquer my fear. I need justice. And I'm like, no, 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 no. A kid would want revenge. <laughs> a kid would yeah, be... Yeah. And this is, like, a decade later. Yeah. It makes sense that he would have this in his mind until he goes through these these life changing moments where he sees the man get shot, he sees Rachel's reaction to him, he confronts Falcone. All these moments that kind of inform in some way of who he's going to be and sort of changes his outlook on life, and he's reminded of his father and, and so on and so on. But the point I'm making here is that all of that is him recovering. He was addicted. He, you know, he was consumed by revenge. 
and then he he went through a, a process of recovery which is an extreme process by anyone's standards but it worked for him and he came out on the other end believing that people can recover and he wants the city to recover he may never say those words exactly but he kind of represents that in a really bizarre you know he he in many ways is the biggest victim of of what gotham became hmm? yeah and definitely so you know and you know what we are we are 15 minutes in we've barely touched on the plot so far and we have already talked more about what makes the character tick and what the character's journey is than we did in all the four last movies combined. Yeah, sure. I agree with that. Because they're all shit. They're not all shit. They're all shit. <laughs> the last one's a good movie. Get over it. No. They're all shit. This is good. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> this is a proper this film. Movie. This is significantly better. First one's still good. This, this has character progression, it has themes, it has actually interesting looking cinematography. So, sorry, people who like Burton's style. <laughs> um, you know, it is what it is. Um, but hey, I, 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 I went off in one uh, to my starting point. What, do you, what would you like to bring up? <laughs> uh, oh, before I forget, it, another little weird critique that oh, I had on. noticed in this time. So when he goes down to, you know, Applied Sciences and Lucius is showing him around. Yeah. It's really weird and coincidental how he shows him exactly the things he will need for Batman. Doesn't show him anything else. It's like, hey, look, and Lucius at this point has no clue what he's doing. Well, see, I see. He said, before he opens the case, he's like, oh, here we are. He says that as if Bruce asked for something specific. As if Bruce was looking for a sp particular type of thing. Maybe... Because keep in mind, every other time we see him after this, he's, you know, because they go to the, 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 the armour, and he's like, oh, it's for, for what was it, spelunking, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the armour's uh, in that scene, though. No, it is, but, but it's after. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it cuts from there to the next location. It does, yeah. Uh, so in, in this case, then, I feel maybe we were missing a line of dialogue. It, of, yeah, I mean, I think that's all it is. I, I think there's, we're, maybe it was never written, or maybe they just didn't like it, and they took it out, but... Yeah, because it feels weird and coincidental how it's like, Here's a grappling gun. Here's some body armor. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, like, like in the later scenes when we're going back to him and, and Lucius like, all right, I kind of know what you're up to now. Fine. Uh, but this first one felt weird to me. Kind of know what you're up to now. I don't think he was guessing dressing as a giant bat. I don't think that was in his head. <laughs> Maybe not immediately, but <laughs> by the time he's offering the car, he definitely knew. What? Well, Still the bat theme, though. He had bat theme by that point. He might have done. There was a bat out in public. Not as if, yeah, there wasn't. There was by the time he was offering the car, wasn't there? No, because that's when he goes to get the cape. It's the same scene, because he, oh, he's right, showing right, the yeah. cape and he's like, oh, what's that? Yeah. And Lush is like, oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. Cut to... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so... You know. Fair enough, fair enough. After there's news of the bat taking down crime boss Falcone, I'm sure Lucius, the smart man that he is, that said... Probably figured it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 That looks like my suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that cheeky yeah, billionaire. Yeah, it a bit, a bit, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you know, I love Alfred in this. I love... Because he, you know, he's got that, some of that sassiness that I like. Um, I yeah. like... Uh, one of the little jokes I've always liked is the... Where they're ordering the parts for the cowl, and he's like, "Oh, we'll order the the ears from this place, and we'll order the the, the actual cowl part from this place, uh, but they'll have to be large orders to avoid suspicion." And Bruce is like, "Oh, oh, how many?" He's like, ah, ten thousand, give or take." And Bruce just kind of like goes, "Well, at least we'll have spares." And I love Alfred's reaction to it. He's like, "Yes," and he's, 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 he's like, he's excited. He's like, he's like, "Yes, what spares? Good, yes." Yeah, yeah. He's an organized he's a very man. practical man, Alfred. Spares are essential. He is. Uh, so no, that's that's, that's good. As uh, well, let's talk about the general things we always talk about the Batman movies. Bat suit. How, what's your feeling? Um, better than the previous four. Mm -hmm. Not turn, perfect. Can turn his head. <laughs> yeah, he can turn his head. So, I mean, already better. Uh, I, uh, I, one of my complaints, actually, in the, the next two movies is that uh, I really like the bat symbol that's on his chest in this one. And I was I was disappointed they changed it to the, just the, the one that they use everywhere else for the movies. Okay. Because he's, he's, he's batarang in this one's like the hard top edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They use that in his chest, I think, in the next couple. Whereas this one's so. got more of a classic, just big bat symbol. Which no, I, like. I agree with that. I like that. I think the suit's a little bit on bulky. the bulky side, yeah. yeah. That's a bit bulky. Um, again, it's it's 
it's body armor, right? Yeah. And you know, it, obviously that's built into the. Do you know what I like about it though? Is that it, and it makes sense that he gets a, sl- a sleeker version in the second film. Is that it feels bulky in a natural way, where because of its purpose, it's kind of bulky. Yeah, and I can I, I like that. I like that idea of it. I love that the the capes are different, like material. It's not like the same like leather that you know because in the last movie it's like the cape connected to the cowl so it was just this one big same material thing he's got this yeah. kind of cloth I, kind of idea i'm not gonna like i like that when the cape connects to the cowl i like when you you know you can lift off the the cowl and the cape comes with it i do like that look yeah, but you can't part. turn your head there's ways <laughs> oh is there, there, yeah. there, there are ways okay okay oh i like the look of that mm-hmm. um what do you want uh, yeah but it's a, it's a solid bad suit. It's not the best. It's solid. It's, it's I, the best to, up to this point. I, th- I think, yeah, part of me is like, yeah, I would always rather have the grey and black suit, right? I'd, I'd, I'd want this, but make the, the main part grey. <laughs> you know? That would immediately make it better. Yeah, just a, not even a light grey, just like a, a, you know, a slightly lighter on the rest of it, just to give it that, that, that contrast. Yeah. And I think that yeah, would that would make it pop. But um, no, I like his battery. I actually like all his gadgets. I like the grappling gun. I like the belt. Like all that stuff. I like how that all looks. Yeah. So so it's got a kind of steampunky kind of look to it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, bit mixed on the car. I, I'm I'm sure we've been over this before. I get it in its purpose in this movie. You know, it's it's a tank, but it's just not that aesthetically pleasing to look at. <laughs> You know, as as yeah. as far as a Batmobile goes, it should be stylish, but it's not, is it? It's very practical, but it's not stylish. I'm not a car person, so I don't really have this this high up on how yeah. it looks. I I think like I, as long as it doesn't look stupid, I'm happy. Where you know some of the previous Batmobiles have looked stupid. The last one was the worst. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, convertible Batmobile. I mean, I know the '60s one had that, but the '60s was was, was stupid as well. It was a classy car. It was a regular car with like a battle symbol painted on it. Exactly. It was classy. That's not class. It's cheap. It was better than the last one. Last one lit up. That doesn't make it better. Um, do you know what's funny actually? I take that back. Lights, lighting up makes everything better. One of the things I noticed actually in this is that, it's not that I didn't notice it before, but having just watched the previous bunch, is that. Uh, and I think some of the animated series is that the computer in the Tumblr does talk. It does sort of like say things now and then. It's not like an AI, but like it does say. It's it's more of a sat nav. It's more of a sat nav. But it was just, it made me laugh because I was thinking about the animated series and how this is like the realistic version of that now. But we've come so far that we can kind of have that. It doesn't feel. Yeah, yeah. My phone funny. can do this now. Oh, there you go. Probably couldn't in two thousand five. Probably not. No. When the movie came out. Yeah, but it's it's it, it's just advanced you know it, it's slightly ahead of where we were right which yeah. kind of makes sense for batman's tech uh you know it's it's a bit ahead it's on it's on the cusp of the cutting edge but it's not impossible yeah so and that's what what where the the the, the ideal you know place where batman's tech should be yeah i love the cave i love that it's just actually a proper cave with water running and shit yeah yeah that that's always one of my favorite transitions in the whole movie is um Bruce asking for the suit, and he's like, uh, you know, spelunking, and then it cuts to him in the cave. Is the that that's the yeah. next shot? Uh, I'm like, yeah, that's a great one. It's a neat transition. In fact, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when he first goes out of the cave and he like stands up in the swarm of bats. Like you know, he's like standing up and facing his fear for the for the first time. Because it's interesting because obviously in the comics, at least you know, ever since year one, they treat the big like bat coming through the window after he's tried to be a vigilante already is this kind of moment where he's like, yes, Father, I should become a bat. And it, it kind of starts just like a really mundane moment in this movie where he's just kind of researching, like, you know, what cops he can trust and stuff, and a bat starts flying around. And it, it, there's nothing there to it in and of itself. And for a second, I'm like, did, did they miss a beat not like doing that something more like that moment? And then every time I think that, it, it's like, no, it's because this, it's about the end of the scene. It's not about the start of the scene. Because where it ends is fantastic. And it's him going out of the cave and facing his fear and standing up. And the swarm of bats, and I love that moment because because his main theme is essentially two chords, right? Yeah. And his two chord theme plays as he stands up in the in the cave with the bats. I uh, I love the 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 music for this movie. Well, I wasn't going to go out the music yet, but uh, yeah, the, the music is fantastic. I like James Newton Howard and Hans Zimmer were like already two of my favorite composers, 
Um, and you know, this is this may be a controversial, unpopular opinion. I think this is way better than anything Danny Elfman did for Batman. No, I agree. Um, I love both parts. It's because because uh, I, I don't know if you know if you're aware of how they did this. They didn't sit down together and go. Yeah, through, no, they you know, they, they had. Uh, well, I don't know, the, the second movie they had different characters. I don't know exactly what they did for this one. Uh, they were just given different scenes. I think most really? of the actual Batman stuff is Zimmer. Mm. And then um, all the other stuff. Let me guess, the, the piano theme for his parents and stuff, that was that was Howard. Yeah, yeah. I think the only time that I can... Because I can pinpoint most of who's who as it's going. Because they've got pretty distinctive styles individually. The only time I think um, Howard's doing any sort of the, the action-y bit is... Uh, down by the docks before he's actually Batman. Uh, you know, where he's got the, the balaclava. That's not the docks. Not the docks. When's he got the balaclava? It's, uh, it's Gordon. with Gordon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that one. <laughs> and uh, no, I, I think I think the start of the docks actually as well, where it's the horror theme sort of stuff that's going on. Oh, sure. You're just not in the balaclava is what I was... Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. I'm mixed up the two scenes. Uh, I think both of those are uh, Howard and then everything else in the bat suit. No, is, is like... I find myself like humming so many different parts of the score, like on a fairly regular basis. Yeah, it's got several. And do you know what the great, do you know what I love about it, is that there's a natural kind of heroic main theme that is built into it that doesn't come in until the next movie, and I kind of love that. Yeah, I kind of no, love. You, it. Can, you can hear it here when you, you know, when you know what you're looking for, and you know they've built on this. Yeah, like I can hear where it was almost going to go into, it, and it just doesn't. Right, yeah, because I've I've heard it in the the, the follow up, but yeah. like it's 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 really kind of cool actually. The, the, I, I love the idea of the music evolving with them uh, in, yeah, to some yeah. extent, uh, and I love that no, the music no. across all three films does feel like one suite. It feels like no, this is all part of one tapestry. It is, and it's such an interesting sound like that that two chord uh, you know progression that you you referred to. It's this uh, electronic cello effect. That is unique to this movie. That sound. Uh, well, yeah, this, these three movies. I you, you, there might have been a few attempts to you know do a, mm. a copy of it after this. I, I don't really remember. I mean, there probably was, um, but it was one of those that you'd never hear really anywhere else. That sound. Even just the there's a sort of like. I guess I'll call it a drum beat. Is it this sort of thumping sound? It's, it's, the movie starts with it. Um, yeah. It's like. Whoop, whoop, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, that's, uh, that, that's that's Zimmer. That's, yeah. from, that's from his sample library. But it's, it sounds very unique. Like it almost sounds like some of the drum beats have, have been played backwards. And they are, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They are. They're, they're played backwards and then noise gated, so you don't have a, a weird tail on them. Yeah, it's a very interesting, unique sound. Which, it is, which I like. And it's something that I don't think you would ever have thought of as "Ooh, Batman." That sound, right? Hmm. And obviously now we we hear that and associate it with these, but when when you hear that music or before these movies, you, you know that style of music, you'd never have gone. Yes, that's what Batman should sound like. Yeah, no, I think that's true. Um, but no, it's music's a bold choice. Music's fantastic. I yeah, I, like well, all the sort of like broad topics. I mean, we talk about Alfred. I mean, Christian Bale himself as he's uh he's Batman. solid. Yeah, he's solid. Uh, I think. He doesn't. He he's not fully bulked up on this movie yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know he's he's getting there. Don't get me wrong. Um, and you know it's the start of his his journey as Batman, so it makes sense. You know, um, but it's 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 weird. Counter to how I said the suit was too bulky, he doesn't feel big enough. Weirdly, and I don't think it helps that a lot of the time, you know, when he's doing the Batman, he you know he stood next to Liam Neeson at the at the end, who is significantly taller than him. Mm. Uh, and it and it makes him look even smaller. Even though he's, he's like six foot, he's a tall man. He looks short when you stand him next to Liam Neeson, and uh, it has this unfortunate effect. Mm. Um, I suppose we have to talk about the voice. People are going to be expecting the voice. <sighs> yeah, it's not as bad in this movie though, is it? It's yeah, it's a bit more muted in this one before the the next two where he goes full Bale Batman. Yeah. Um. I gotta be honest, it doesn't really bother me. It does in the next two. This one, I because in my head it's always just as bad as in the, the next yeah. two. 
uh and i just assumed you know oh yeah it sounds like that throughout all three and it doesn't they they turn it up in the next couple um i like i i like the level that it's at here a lot more that's fair that's fair. I mean, I hate all... it though. I mean, you know. Yeah, like some people hate it and they think it just like makes the whole thing fall apart. I, I, I've just never felt that way. Like it. I think there are points where it takes me out of it. Like where you know, in the next movie specifically, where he'll say something in the voice and it's so ridiculous mm. that it kind of takes me out. I'm, I'm almost laughing at the scene instead of feeling whatever it's meant to be at the time. Yeah. Because um, I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm going to stick up for uh, Spirit of Me and do a look like a cop. I love that scene with Floss. Because this is one of the things I love. One of the things I love about it is that I feel like once he gets going, once he's become Batman, there's so many great little scenes where it'll it'll just be like, okay, this is the scene where he's been intimidating, right? Where he's doing the voice and he's he's interrogating someone. We get one scene of that. We get one scene of him hiding in the background. You know, when like the Scarecrow and that come out of the apartment, he's like, you can just see the the sh- you know the the silhouette of the cowl in the background and it's just this perfect little moment yeah um it, obviously we have the the opening horror scene of him actually attacking the, the group and the, the the iconic and batman uh yeah. moment all, all, all that works really well and um the idea that he's even working with uh gordon and rachel to like it was, oh something's coming like you know scarecrow's just a fall guy there's, there's something bigger coming like it felt like oh this does feel kind of, kind of like a batman event like I, I can you know picture reading this that's arc and a comic. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Do you know what one of my favorite, you know, almost, almost behind the scenes is, you know, you know, right. So we weren't following this movie pre-production, right? Yeah. Um, but if this was being made now and we were getting cast announcements, uh-huh. we'd get Liam Neeson cast as Ducard, right? Yes. That's sort of the announcement would be. And we would believe that casting 100%. I think I would until I saw what they did with his beard. As soon as I saw that, so as soon as I'd, I'd, I'd see that facial hair, I'd go, he looks like Razal Girl. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But, you know, you, you, you tell me, oh, Liam Lee's is playing Dakar. I'm like, yeah, okay, I can definitely see that. That's great yeah. casting. And and you go with that for a while. And I'm like, and I think that's a, a nice little idea that, that they were paying attention enough to, you, you know, as, when they gave him the, you know, the other identity at the start of the movie. It was they chose one that would have worked for that reason. Mm. Of course, didn't work as well with the third movie when they they, they cast uh, uh, what's her face? Oh, oh, mm. French woman. I know. I'm, I can see her face. Inception two. Damn it! Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, <laughs> d- d- well, IMDb it when we get to that movie. Yeah, we were like, ah, it's Talia. And they kept denying it. It's Talia. They kept denying it. It's yeah. Talia. It turned out it was Talia. So, yeah. yeah um... And there's a lot in here. I think like it's funny because like you th- oh, Christopher Nolan make a comic movie. It's going to be very highbrow. It's going to be this like down and dirty movie, and it, and it is to a point. But it's actually really comic booky, especially in the second half. And it has so many nods, like you know, like Commissioner Loeb's there, like they're using Falcone. You know, the next one has Maroni in it. Like, like all, yeah. all these I mean, names. Just the idea of using the the Ducard name is is like just a a, yeah. a nod in itself yeah or even just the idea of like doing the year one and like that that era onwards where gotham is a corrupt city full of bad people yeah the, the idea that gordon's but, the one good cop left and like i say it goes full comic booky when yeah you know, when you've got the bats coming in yeah yeah that's a straight uh, that's a scene from year one it is yeah um uh, and it looks pretty good yeah no the bats look great i Honestly, if I if I was to critique the 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 movie as a whole and say there should be more of something, I do wish there was a couple more scenes of Gordon before we first see him, like just him being a cop, just to get a sense of how bad things are in the city, like from his perspective. Before we first see him, when because obviously we see him with young Bruce. Like, not not counting the flashback. I'm thinking because the first time we see him in present days with Flash in the car, and it's like it's after Bruce has already come back to Gotham. It's you know it's. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty far okay. in. And Flas is offering him to, you know, come on, let's yeah. get on the take. Um, and he's refusing, of course, because he's Jim Gordon. He's a goddamn hero. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I almost wonder just a couple of scenes where he actually goes to a crime scene and it's just, like, depressing because he can't do anything. Or, you know, just a, one or two scenes like that, just to set that up. I get that. Um, I wonder if it would have distracted from the pacing, though, because it's already quite them. a lot, uh, you know, 
bloated movie in the sense of there's a lot going on. Yeah, it's two hours twenty minutes. We got a lot of characters, and it, it handles them very well. I think Nolan does a really good job. Joe, Joe is what one of the, the things I would take out. There was a couple of little comic relief moments, and what I think is funny is that if this was made now, people would be saying, "Oh, it's done. It's done a few Marvel jokes. They're doing a few MCU style jokes in here," and it's not that at all because this was before. This was three years before Iron Man came out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, honestly, Gordon saying, "I've got to get me one of those when the the tumbler drives off," I'm like, uh, <laughs> that line hurts." Yeah. That yeah. line hurts a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. It feels like a character uh, on top of just being a dumb line. Yeah, yeah. There are there is a couple of those. Or the the random homeless dude who's like nice ride when Gordon's in it towards the end. Like, okay, we get it. People like the tumbler, right? <laughs> Calm down. They really wanted everyone to go look. The tumbler's cool. Yeah. Like, that's that's what that, that's what I got from this. And it and it is as for what it is. Like it, no, yeah. but yeah. it uh, it makes me think they weren't a hundred percent confident in it either. They were like. Let's put in a couple of things and tell people, no, this is cool. You like this. People like this. Uh, the joke I see it, I see, like, Nolan wasn't a big name yet, and they were giving him this big Batman movie, and he was essentially getting let to do whatever he really wanted with it, but there was a couple of, ca like, small caveats where, oh, you have to put a bit of comedy in it because it's a big budget, you know, superhero movie for everyone. <laughs> like, put in a bit of light-hearted stuff. So I, I feel like the, the two or three awkward jokes that are in there that have come off has been really weird. I feel like... They're a quota that has been filled by the for the studio. Yeah, quite possibly. Because I don't remember any comedy like that in the next two. I mean, I'm not saying there's no funny lines because there is, um, but they're better. Like you know, in Dark Knight Rises, when the cop says to Dark Cop, uh, you know, the younger cop, he's like, "Oh, you're in for a show tonight, son." Like that's actually a good line. That actually like added something to the scene. Yeah, and obviously in the second one, you have all the the Joker stuff. To and, add to 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 add to the the the, the comedy angle. Yeah, Joker's obviously Joker, so yeah. Uh, but there's a couple of one-liners in this one that kind of stick out. It's been like eh. they do fall a bit flat. Yeah, yeah, you know, not great. Um, but uh, no, but like if, for me, it's all about the fact that it actually handles Bruce's journey. It actually handles his becoming Batman. His his decision for vengeance then his decision not for vengeance his decision not to be a killer his decision you know going and yeah i mean people like, like to argue that okay t you know the the fake raz right he does die yes during the scene where you know he's burning the temple and he's expected everyone to leave um and most of them do leave right you know he rescues uh the real raz this is getting confusing uh he rescues liam neeson of course the big, big scene where he's sliding off the side of the the mountain yeah and it's all fine and here's the thing. So when I, when I when I mentioned earlier that not even these like these three movies, right? This movie, it's still not 100 percent perfect in how it portrays like the Batman I want in the sense that, yeah, like he. I think at one point in a fight scene later on with uh, it's when he shows up to Arkham and Scarecrow's there and it's all Scarecrow's guns. At one point he grabs another guy's hand when he's holding a gun and points it at an old dude's foot, and I think it's the other guy's hand that pulls the trigger technically, but like. You know, it's, yeah, it's stretching it a bit, isn't it? It's stretching it, and it, like, it doesn't bug me because, for me, it's like you know, this Batman is is stated clearly that he's not a killer. He, if he's not said it in this one, he definitely says it in future, you know, in the series that he doesn't use guns at all. And the heart's in the right place. The overall sentiments there, what he's trying to inspire, is there. There's That's just barring a of, one big moment at the end. Yeah, there's just a c couple of weird scenes throughout the trilogy where they kind of stretch the rules, and it's just a little bit like, I would have just not written this. I would have written around this this, this decision. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. They wrote themselves into a corner, didn't they? Yeah, because at the end, of course, he's like, I, you know, I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you. And mm -hmm. yeah, my, my thought every time I hear that is that, nah, Batman would still save him. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he would. Every time, that's my thought, but... If this was comic book Raz, fine. He'd go, nah, he'll be back. Don't worry about it. Sure, yeah, because he knows he's coming back, yeah. But let, let, let's say it was Joker, right? He'd still save him. He would. He would. And I feel like that's one of those things where just in adapting it, they've, they've made this choice because for some reason in movies, they think they, they can't avoid it happening in some level, in some capacity. There has to be someone, you know, the villain somehow has to die and they have to try and write around it. And, which is one of the things I love about the next one is that they don't try and kill Joker. It's just, no, 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 he's around. And it ha had Heath Ledger not passed away, I'm sure he'd have been in the third one. Yeah. I think what, what first makes me is you can have the villain die. You can have Bruce try and save him and fail. Yeah. 
and and still have him dead and you know you've, your end result's still the same it's just better yeah it's just better for the character um so you know that, that, that that's the that's the one glaring thing where it's like yeah that, that feels a bit off uh, yeah and the, the, on that kind of note it, it's not uh quite as bad as uh when he first comes out in the tumbler you know he, he's doing the do the car chase Oh, yeah, he, he goes the... straight over that cock. Why? There's so much space around it. Like the time <laughs> he saves going over, he probably spends more time going over the car than he does just to go around it. What the hell? Yes, I appreciate the shoulders that both cops were unharmed. Though. No, no, no. The cops were fine, yeah. but have a bit of respect for you know just you know this taxpayer's money. This <laughs> like what? Um. Yeah. After after seeing Batman v Superman, though, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This okay. Is nothing. The... The bar has been lowered. <laughs> yes, the bar has been exceptionally lowered. That is true. <laughs> I'm not giving this a pass though, because that one in particular really stood out. Like everything else during that car chase, fine. You know, he hits through a few like lamp posts or whatever. You know, whatever. That one, it's the start. Nothing's after him yet because they've not noticed. He goes straight over that car for yep. no reason. Like. I, I do love that car chase though. I love them on the rooftops, you know, jumping. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, you know, that, that's what that's kind of why I love the tumbler is the functionality of it. They kind of built in this like, no, it was it's... for jumping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's why I'm conflicted on it because I like it in theory. I like what it does in the movie. It's just not stylish. It doesn't. Look, it's not good to look at, and that that upsets me a little bit. Eh, stylish, smellish. Uh, we have somehow avoided talking about Rachel, uh, played by Katie Holmes. <laughs> so far probably because she's the least interesting part of the movie yeah i don't think she's terrible she's just not like i i, I mean if i have a critique about the trilogy as a whole right barring catwoman in the third one there's no interesting female characters oh i really noticed how bad it was with uh with martha the martha do, do you know what i think it's funny I, i'm almost convinced that Zack snyder was overcompensating with the martha bullshit because martha gets kind of shafted in this one where she doesn't the, even have a oh, line of dialogue her first line her first word is screaming Thomas when when the when the gunshot goes off. Yeah, everything's about his father. Even later on, when Alfred's like, "Oh, it's your father's name. It's your father's legacy." What about Martha? <laughs> yeah, like I get where Alfred's coming from in the sense that it's the Wayne the, the, lineage. The, he, he's the Wayne, right? Yeah. You know, it's come from him. I get it, but I I was really feeling it this time. I was like, yeah. That, 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 that whole flashback on the monorail where Thomas is giving him the speech. I'm she's like, just smiling. She's just nodding at him. She, she says nothing the entire time. Yeah. It just it feels really weird. And it feels like, no, no, we made Thomas the important parent. And I'm like, I just, nah. Because, like, you know, Rachel's the only other female character really in the movie. Uh, unless we're counting Lynn from Black Lightning, who nearly made me do a double take <laughs> when, when Bruce walked in and she was the secretary at Wayne Enterprises. And I'm like, is that young Lynn? It's young Lynn! <laughs> yeah, d doesn't really count though, does it? Well, no, no, no of course it doesn't count. She's, it's, it's an extra. Yeah. yeah <laughs> She's barely, a point. Ba barely a speaking role. Exactly. Uh, um, so, no, it, it is definitely lacking good female characters. It's, it's almost lacking any female characters, let's be honest. But it's definitely yeah. lacking good ones. And there was hope in the second one when they recast Maggie Gyllenhaal. And I, like, Maggie Gyllenhaal's great. Like, she's obviously a better she's actress. so much better. Yeah. But ultimately, the character's there to be fridged. <laughs> and yeah. there's really not much we can do about that. Catwoman is the only female character, really, in the whole trilogy that is interesting fun and has a character that's kind of worth something i'm gonna be interested i mean you know, i'm gonna be looking no no you know noticing it this time and you know the, the the way it was portrayed here i'm gonna be when we get to to rises yeah seeing just how good it actually is or if it's just because the bar was so low no i remember quite liking her catwoman but we'll, I mean, we'll see obviously we'll yeah, see yeah. when we get there but yeah so rachel's you know she's there to be you know rachel she's there to be screamed at rachel at um and kind of get into mischief she doesn't really do a lot except give bruce someone to save and even then it's not even like okay so we have the big car chase and he goes and gets her arkham right i suppose that's kind of the big save scene but even for the rest of it it just feels like a couple of small moments i i honestly again i feel like there was almost a like a, a ma mandated thing here where it was like you have to have a, a leading lady you have to have a love interest yeah Right, you have to have a love interest, and I feel like they had to just kind of 
work around. It's not so much that they actually had a great idea and said, oh, no, we'll have this character as the DA who, who he's in love with. It... Which, let's be fair, they tried more than in the last movie. Oh, and Robin? In terms of... <laughs> what? And Batman and Robin? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, she's just there for a couple of scenes, this random woman, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at least here they tried. She's, she's you know, going. she's in the DA's office and she's going against corruption because she's an idealist. There's, there's she... something there. It's just not, doesn't do anything with it. I mean, I, I, it almost feels like she's kind of the Leslie Tompkins. Because okay. if, you, if you look at it from a, uh, like, a, everything's for Batman's sake, right? Everything's for Bruce's sake. The main purpose our character really has is that after he was thinking of revenge, thinking of killing Joe Chill, she reminds him of the you know the the integrity of of his father, right, and what he would think of this, and and she's kind of there to be like a moral compass to a point, right, and then on top of that, uh, she's there because there has to be more than just Alfred that's, that's at risk, because that you know it's brought up multiple times, like you've got these two people you could lose, right, these are the two the two people who they could get to that would hurt you. And it's like, if it was just Alfred, it'd be like, yeah, so she kind of feels like a Leslie Thompson's kind of, not exactly, but like, she's kind of filling some of that kind of role. Mm, I get it. Instead of being the doctor, though, she's the, the DA, or the assistant yeah. DA. We should probably mention some of the other actors that are in there, just because there's some really dependable names that are just kind of like, you know, sprinkled throughout. Morgan Freeman is there as Lucius Fox. Yeah. Solid. Uh, Rutger yep. Hauer is an evil businessman. <laughs> Solid. Yeah, nothing to stand out, but yeah, just there, right? Very, de- very dependable. Um, Wilkinson as uh, Falcone, solid. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Of, just a lot of solid like supporting players to really prop up. It's got quite an impressive cast actually. Um, it does for what amount to relatively small roles. It does, yeah. Like somehow they talked all these people into this, and maybe they're all closet Batman fans. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe, and obviously this was before comic book movies were as big as they are now. Like you know, there was always there was a you know. A trend going, but they weren't. They weren't seen as that respectable at the time. It was pre MCU, as we just. <laughs> yeah, well, and pre this trilogy as and well. And pre this trilogy, yeah, this, this trilogy did a bit, did a big thing for it. That's true. Yeah, yeah, like because uh, you know, like you, you had like the X Men movies going, sure, but you know, they were fine, right? They were just there, <laughs> and 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 and, you know, and Spider Man yeah, as well. Yeah, Even yeah. at the time, they weren't like, oh, let's get all the big names and you know, let's make sure. this a huge thing. Yeah, I'm sure you've upset some fans of the X Men movies by saying that. <laughs> yeah, probably Spider Man movies too. They're, they're just there. By... <laughs> they're there. And I say that as, and I like two of those three X Men movies, but they're just kind of there. Mm. So, yeah, so yeah, that's a very, very impressive cast, kind of throughout. Uh, I typically like the look of the movie quite a bit. Uh, and what th- I guess the one thing we've not really done now is start start talking about specific moments and scenes and uh standout kind of kind of yes thing. after 45 minutes we should talk about some specifics yes well i mean we had a lot to talk about we were very we opinionated did. on these things we, we start i mean we started off with a nice little chat about themes and Bruce's journey which i think is you know part of what yep. makes this movie stand out um, i guess i need to start with maybe my favorite moment in any comic book movie ever <laughs> like oh okay bold claim i think i we have got. To... so this is a very personal thing but it's uh falcone on the signal it's it's gordon coming over thinking like okay well yeah we're not going to catch him and the other cop's like i wouldn't be so sure so sure about that and he walks over and then you, know, you see him lying there and you're like he's on a signal and then you kind of you know the first time you watch it he just it maybe just it takes a second to realize what this is and then gordon looks up out of the sky and you get the shot of the signal which first of all looks far more natural than it ever did in the, the, the like, it was like colored on in the last movies <laughs> well yeah um, it looks actually I mean it's not necessarily the most realistic thing ever but it looks like it's hitting clouds <laughs> at least as opposed to yeah. just this this painted thing and you know the music everyone knows it's always cloudy in Gotham it's fine yeah and there was this you know one of my favourite music cues in the film kind of like plays there as well and it's like this moment of like hope that he didn't really expect which is kind of why I almost wanted more like like Gordon on his own before this being kind of depressed <laughs> the idea that this was mm-hmm. like like this this helping hand coming that he never expected but I think there was, there was. I think this is a really good scene anyway on its own, right? Just the, the moment of the the symbol for the first time and the like. He's making his statement, you know, the idea of theatricality, which is you know brought up in the movie. That's why you know he dresses a bat. That's why there's all these things. Personally, for me, the reason why this moment sticks out in this film and then just up out of the trilogy and then out of all superhero movies is because this is the moment in the movie where I realized how much I gave a shit. 
because obviously I was liking it up to this point, but I never realised how invested I was until Gordon looked up at that symbol and inside I went, F yeah. Like, I just, I felt it. Like, okay, fair enough. You know, I don't know if I remember this exact phrasing because obviously this, this hadn't entered the lexicon yet because the comic didn't exist. But I could have sworn in my head, I went, yeah, the goddamn Batman's here. Right? <laughs> I'm really certain that would have through my head. The moment that, that that happened, the the signal in the sky, and I love that it's rough. I love that it's not a perfect bat symbol because it's just him and his coat. So it's just kind of the triangle kind of shape. Yeah. And they're like, what is it? Yeah. But, you know, I just, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. 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 I don't love it quite as much as you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good moment. It's a very good moment. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't think I have it on quite the, the pedestal that you do. I can, say it was, I can say it was personal. Uh, you know, yeah. I love uh, Bruce in the Cave with the Bats. So we mentioned that before. Um, yeah. I, I love the, the, the Tumblr chase. Yeah. I think one of my favourite moments is the uh, the Bats in the building from year one. Oh, that's fair, yeah. Uh, when they're all swimming. I think that's just a fantastic moment. Uh, another good moment, another, another good uh, two chord moment is uh, Gordon on the on the island being like, uh, you know, we need, need people, need everyone, send everyone. And Lobe's like, there's no one left to send in. And then that exact moment. all in there, yeah. Yeah, exact, exact moment, the tumbler just comes jumping over into the island. Um, and Gordon's like, it's fine, we got back up. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I almost put a, like, intentionally, mistakenly call it the Glades just to make a point, but I'm not going to. Uh, the how narrows. dare you, sir? How <laughs> dare you sully this discussion? Yeah, also, Batman should let Joffrey die. Um, so... <laughs> Would have saved a lot of trouble for a lot of people. I, I don't even like that show. <laughs> yeah, but you can't help yourself, can you? Because it's just there. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. That's, this, is, this is true. Um, yeah, yeah. What well, the moment, scenes, what, did, what, did you, what are you liking? What do I? I yeah, uh, I love the all the stuff on the fear gas toxin. Mm, oh yeah, that effect is terrifying. It's distorted. It's unnatural. Uh, it's psychedelic without being over the top in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, it's it's funny because the, the the next two movies don't have anything like this. And like watching this again, I was like, yeah, this is like super like proper scarecrow comic book. Yeah, uh, and. I, I, I love how like Batman looks when Scarecrow sees him on the gas. I think one of my favourite shots is the, the demented horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his full Scarecrow moment, essentially. Yeah, like, oh man, that's so good. I, lo I love a couple of shots on the, in the narrows when the gas is spread, and it's just like people wandering through the smoke, almost almost like zombies, like just not really knowing what they're doing, because they're all just yeah. terrified. Uh, and then when they see Batman like gliding overhead with the delight coming from his mouth and stuff... Um, actually, do, do you know what I really like? Uh, one of my favourite little touches, and it's just a piece of dialogue, and it was in all the trailers, right? But uh, it's when Batman shows up at Arkham, and they just hear a noise, like, the bad guys just hear a noise, and Scarecrow's, you know, Jonathan Crane's like, it's him, and they're like, who? The Batman. The moment he says that, I, I just like, yes! Like, that that's the reaction I want from the, the, the bad guys. Like, sure, the rest of them are scared, but he's, like, intrigued. He's like, oh, yeah. that's not job. Okay, I'm into yeah. this. Yeah, there's a professional curiosity yeah. there for Crane. Uh, I, I just I dig that. It's, it's the idea of the legend starting to spread and all the other stuff. Mm. Um, oh, that's real good stuff. I dig that a lot. I love uh, the whole training sequence at the start. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the mountain, on the ice. I think that's gorgeous. Yeah, even even just the, the the stuff they give you in the movie for the, the reasons for things like the idea of a symbol being incorruptible and immortal as opposed to a man who can be killed and destroyed. Like yeah. this is why it has to be a symbol. This is why it has to be uh, a character. Essentially, it has to be something. Yeah. Um, because it'll stand out. Because I think Bruce puts it best. Puts it best when he says, "People need dramatic examples to shake them out of apathy." So yeah. I'm going to give them some drama, basically. <laughs> and indeed he does indeed he does yes uh, well Alfred's enjoying the Rolls Royce um, I'm with Alfred on this one which I actually laugh because I'm pretty sure that's a Rolls Royce he's, he's stuffing Katie Holmes into when she's like knocked out from the, yeah. the party after the Scarecrow yeah. stuff it's like yeah he's using the Rolls Royce in a really smart way here <laughs> but as a, I, I not, great little moment actually is uh, when he goes to pick him up after he's been burned by Scarecrow and it's Alfred's at, like on the verge of tears in the front seat of the car as he's driving him home. Yes, concerned Alfred. That is good. Yeah, 
mostly uh, sassy, but with a couple of scenes of concerned is yeah, is what you want. Yeah, because he, there's, there's he's always considered like he never takes it lightly. Like he's always like, no, no, no this is serious. Oh, absolutely. Because even later on, when he's arguing with Bruce about uh, like the nature of what he's doing after the car chase, he's he says, no, this can't be about you, because then you are just a vigilante. This has to be a bit more than that. And he, yeah. he, he he talks about legacy, and I think it's interesting that a big thing that we love about Batman in the comics is the idea of legacy, and the idea that that passes on. And I think it's interesting in this movie, Alfred's like, no, no, the Wayne legacy has to pass on as well. You know, like, Thomas's legacy has to go through you. And then and then the, the, the sad irony that he has to intentionally ruin that yeah. uh, that image to, to just, you know, to save the people. Like, it's... it's the idea that he has to actually make it less personal. You know, he has to do what he has to do um, at cost to his personal self. I mean, I yes, the movie gets the idea that he, that, you know, that, that Bruce is just a mask. So it's not really personal, but it is to, to Alfred. Like, Alfred would care about this. Yeah. It actually kind of mirrors the ending of the next one in a, in a weird way where he has to kind of sully his own reputation for the sake of the good fight, yeah. if you will. Um, yeah. This, this, this time it's Bruce Wayne, next time it's Batman. But It is, yeah, very much. So there's, there's some connective tissue there. Um, Joe, one thing that I wish, actually, from the third movie was in this movie. I Go wish, because in the third one, uh, Alfred sets up this thing where he's like, oh, you know, every so often, you know, while you were missing, I would go to this cafe in, like, Paris or wherever, right? I wish mm. he told that story in this one. Oh, that would have been so much better, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like, I, I wish when we got to that ending scene of, of Rises, I wish it was a callback to this movie and not to earlier on that one. But it's just yeah. it's one of those things where they probably hadn't thought of it yet. Just even like, imagine if it had just been a small like you know when he comes and picks him up on the plane. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, I was just I was just in France. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, just something. Yeah. Just just a reference oh, to that in this one would have been great. But I mean, it is what it is. It's just it's one of those things in hindsight that I've seen all three of them. I'm like, I wish there was a oh, reference only, to that. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Them. It's but, one of those you can't hold it against it. Not really. No, you can't. But oh man, that would have been way better. But yeah, uh, so I mean, obviously we've been nitpicking here and there because obviously after like you know, thirty viewings or whatever I'm at now, uh, something stupid like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> like you you notice these little things. You have your critiques. You you talk about it because uh, this is the thing. Whenever we like criticize Batman v Superman or any other like version, they're not nitpicks. We don't like. Well, they're not nitpicks, but that's not what I'm getting at. I'm saying people always like to argue and say, "Oh, you don't like the Batman kills and that, but technically it kills this person." I'm like, "Yeah, we're kind of acknowledging that. We're acknowledging that not this isn't necessarily one hundred percent." perfect but yeah i think even just you know we were talking about you know, as a as a batman representation i this uh, i think i hinted in one of the last years that I, i'm always disappointed that it's not it's not batman not not fully it's it's an aspect of batman but it's not you know because the detective angle is completely gone here it's not there he's he's listening with an earpiece in one scene <laughs> that's all i've got for you yeah it's it's not there. <laughs> I, I think the second one he's got some forensics. He's got the, the he recreates the bullet and stuff. There's some Tiny crazy stuff. There's, there's some, a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit in the but, second one. Yeah, world's greatest detective. I know, I know. It's not yeah. every aspect of Batman. Yeah, and, exactly. Which, which is my point. It's 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 an aspect of Batman. This. Do, do, do you know yeah. what I would give for like Gordon's daughter to be like older in this movie, just so she's like you know like fourteen, like just on that cusp of like being the, the tech teenager. Yeah. Who and maybe in the third movie could become like Batgirl. I don't know. Like, obviously, I, I start going nuts with this stuff, and I, I don't blame the movie for not having it. But, um, but if only, right? If only, Perfect yeah. world. Like, yeah, like even just the the fighting, I think is a bit bar brawler. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's effective, which is, I guess, you can't argue with it. It gets results, but it doesn't look. People, there's no flow to it. Yeah, people have often criticized. I, I think. I will defend the first time he shows up at the docks because I think the the whole point of that scene is that we don't get a clear look at what's going on because they don't get a clear look at what's going on. Yeah. I think later on in the film when it's like the final stuff and he's fighting the goons just before the train and all that, yeah, we, we should probably have a better sense of the combat there, I think. Um, yeah, it, it, it is very much like a bar brawl. Um, and like I said, it's effective because, you know, they're going down, you're seeing you know, just these heavy hits, right? Um, yeah. But it just doesn't have a flow to it that I think of as Batman. You know, you know, martial arts training, right? Yeah. It's it, it's got none of that. That's fair. I I think fight scenes are one of Nolan's weaker elements. At least this early on. Um, arguably he got better. I think. I I think there's some more notable Batman-y action scenes in the third one that I, I really like. 
versus we'll get to those. yeah we'll get to those yeah. but um but i don't think it's actually surprisingly i don't think it's actually that big a deal in the grand scheme of the movie because the movie's strange there's very little actual fighting yeah. that matters no i agree yeah so you know it is, it is what it is. I, think, I think what is funny to me is this movie it goes all in on the bruce wayne's a mask batman's the the, the mm. real you but at the same time batman is actually a relatively minor part in a way um it's about bruce trying to be batman for a lot of it you know where you know alfred's a lot no this can't be personal him saving rachel is all bruce it's not batman um it's about him trying to shed out of that and become the the batman that the city needs at the end yeah which, which he does he be, he becomes he does the, he does at the, the end, yeah. end I, yeah i think that that moment when the house is about to burn down you know he he gets them all to get out yeah that's the moment where he's like no okay bruce wayne's gone and i, I don't necessarily see that as a because you're saying like oh it's mostly bruce for the movie to me it's like if you want to distinguish them in that weird way but like the journey to Batman is still Batman, if that makes sense. No, 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 I get that. I think the only reason I'm making it is because saying this is because it makes a point in this movie mm. of telling us that now Bruce Wayne doesn't really exist. It's all Batman, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that in this movie. No, no I, I actually agree with it because I, I think the the point is is that even though he's not achieved the Batman yet, right, until that point in the movie, right, and you know, in, in his fourth act. He still that's all he's thinking about that's all he's consumed by you know it's about okay. training it's about proving himself it's about get he wants to accomplish you know from the moment he, he i mean even like obviously when he's going to shoot joe chill he's not batman yet but even then he's obsessed he's still broken by what happened to his parents right he's still like the the way i've always kind of phrased it is that bruce wayne died the same night as his parents did right and something yeah. else was born then and it's kind of sure. festered and grown and became what it is now and throughout the whole course of the movie that's still his drive sure he still cares about rachel he still cares about alfred he's, i mean it's not like he, he sheds every connection he has no of course but he he is that as his goal he's, he's he's constantly working towards that so he's still it's still who he is it's still bruce wayne's still the mask in that the billionaire playboy the face figure if you will yeah is always going to be the facade even before he gets to that point it's the facade it's you know it's that scene where he wakes up and he's got the bruises and alfred's like oh, i yeah, take up yeah. polo you date movie stars whatever you do yeah. no i'm with you Yes, crazy billionaires. And... Yeah, yeah, crazy billionaires indeed. Indeed, yes. Um, <laughs> drunk billionaire burns down home. I, lo- I, lo- I like that headline. Um, I love how that's page eight as well. Yeah. Well, I-, I think when you're in a city where a man dresses a bat just saved the day. Sure, that's page one and two. Yeah. But three? What what's on the next like five pages that 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 wasn't drunk bill you know local billionaire burns down his home. Given how much minutes of this, after everyone was there for a pie. Given how much the city got damaged during all this, and given how many people probably get killed in the arrows, I feel like there's probably a lot of pages to forty to all the, the various facets of this. All right, fine. Like you could I will do, let it slide this one time. You could probably do two pages and just like the, the the structural damage alone uh, <laughs> of the city. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, it's good though it's a good movie do you know what I was just thinking about I was trying to think of it is, is there any like cell phones in this whole movie there's police I radios there but I don't think there's any police cell phones radio. I, don't, I don't think there is no obviously they existed I mean they definitely existed but I'm just, I was trying to think about there if it feels dated because the phones were like pre-smartphone but now I'm thinking about it I don't even think we saw any phones I don't think you see any which is maybe a little bit weird given how key an element they are in the next movie um I I don't know. I, I I buy the exist. Like I I don't have to see Batman go to the toilet to know toilets exist in Gotham City. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying oh he has to be on the phone. But it's we- it's kind of weird that no one ever uses a phone. Just so relevant to the plot. <laughs> it's just it, it's just every day. I don't okay. know. What do you want from me? I don't know. There's no other reason to be on a phone. It's fine. That, that, that and that in itself is kind of weird that. No one had a reason to be on a phone at any point when it's such an everyday object. I bet those movies that come out today still that has no one on a phone for the whole thing. Probably. And it's probably weird in that too. 
it's not that weird. This is not like so much of your day spent not on a phone. They just choose to focus on those moments. The phone calls aren't the important parts of the plot. Mm, we'll see. This is such a weird. I think you're underestimating how much people use their phones. This is such a weird Connor complaint. Oh it is. Oh my god. It is. I'm gonna stick to it. Not on a phone. I'm. I'm sorry. I brought it up. Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> So, um, yeah. So I better talk about the ending scene. I like. I, I this is the sort of scene that might be a post credit scene <laughs> in like a in a movie now. These days, it would be yeah. Yeah, uh, but I love it because it, it kind of mirrors the end of year one. Because the end of year one is like, hey, there's a guy called the Joker kicking about. Like you have to deal with this Batman. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just the the real signals there, and he comes and this idea of escalation, which I love because obviously one of the reasons that we've not even mentioned this word the entire time. But in terms of superhero movies, in terms of Batman movies as well specifically, it's a fairly grounded and, relatively speaking, realistic movie. Oh, man. You had to go and ruin it. I thought we could get through the whole review without using the word <laughs> grounded. Look, I'm using them here because I think it's important to this this final scene because this final scene is the entire point is that it's saying, hey, we're going to have more villains from Batman coming up. But we're setting up the, why it kind of happened. Because it, it feeds into one of the things that comes up in the comics as well as that all these villains only exist because Batman existed. He kind of inspires the craziness almost. Yeah. And Neil Gordon you know, says escalation. He's like, you know, you, you, we buy armor, they buy armor piercing rounds, you know, so on and so on. Um, and he's like, you know, he flips that Joker card. And I remember getting pumped. I remember being so excited. I was like, yes. I, I, you know, I think it was genuinely a, a genius move to save the Joker for the second movie. I really do. No, I agree. Cause it's the one thing that no matter your familiarization with batman mm-hmm. like what level it's at joker that's it you know everyone knows that because it's, it makes so much sense to let the first movie be purely his movie about him becoming batman save yeah. the joker who's going to steal a lot of the show <laughs> for the second film you know get you know set up batman for who he is and then the second film can give him the nemesis that he doesn't know how to deal with yeah definitely because everything, you know, everything with Batman is is it's all logical. It's all like he he plans things, he he thinks things through. But he can't think the Joker through because the Joker is unpredictable. And yeah, yeah, that's the beauty you, of it. You can't expect it. Uh, so it leaves you in this place where you're excited to see, okay, how does what is the Joker like in this world? This again, more grounded world. That's kind of yeah. exciting. Uh, that is, yeah, definitely. And wh- how does this Batman react to that Joker? Uh, and so began the three year wait to the Dark Knight. <laughs> Thank God we're only waiting a week this time. I know. I know. We, I mean, I, why did Which, you, do you no, know no, 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 actually... no, 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 no. I mean, we were waiting a week to record it, but for the audience, it's not a week. Oh, it's not, is it? It's like three yeah. days. Some or four. Super, uh, Stop specifying it. Let's keep it vague. God damn it. So, well, and I'm, I'm giving you a challenge. <laughs> I, I corrected you because I don't want people to think they had to wait a week. I know you're giving me specific days. No, 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 no. It's coming soon. Yeah. All right. <laughs> soon joe is weird actually you know Mm -hmm. i said oh we have to wait a week to watch it i since since the third one came out i don't think i've watched these movies split up it's always been at most over like two or three days Mm. if not just in one day sitting interesting i don't think i've waited like okay i'll i'll wait a week till i watch the next one so this is a an interesting experience for me, genuinely. Well, that's cool. We'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see uh, uh, how how it, how it works, and yeah, um, that's Batman Begins. I mean, I like, I'm sure there's probably something you're like, oh, I, you didn't talk about that part. You didn't talk about this thing, but but uh, but we've gone over an hour now. Yes, and... yes. I feel like we've covered, it. and I'm sure like so, so, some of the things dipped into the other movies. I'm sure we'll dip back into this one with the auto, probably uh, yeah. as we go. So. I guess the one final thing to do is to rate the movie. So, with everything that's just been said, what are you giving Batman Begins? I give it a nine. <laughs> I will also give it a nine. Yeah. It, it, it understands Batman in a way that no other live-action movie has that's really spoke to me. And it may not be perfect, it may be 100%, it may be only 92%. Right, it's very specific, but ninety-two percent is much better than any other live-action Batman movie. Like, much it is, better. It is. 
in terms of uh, a Batman adaptation, it's absolutely like the closest thing we've ever had at this point. Yes. So, Martha was not mentioned in this movie. Literally. I don't <laughs> think they even said her name. I don't think they did. Because, <laughs> do you know why I'm fairly sure of that? Because if they'd said Martha, I might have laughed. Yeah. <laughs> you see in the tombstone the third one, for sure. I don't know if it was brought up at all, though. Maybe yeah. at some point someone says Thomas and Martha Wayne. I could see that being a sentence. Yeah, maybe. But, <laughs> there you go. but yeah, she got the shaft. Yes, uh, but that is that is Batman Begins. So let us know what you think about Batman Begins in the comments below. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show on the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv and you can support us over there for as little as a dollar per month. You get influx episodes a week early, including these Batman episodes. So you can go over there and look at that. At the five dollar tier, you get to vote on an episode once per month, and you get a bunch of other bonuses for other shows as well. Uh, so go have a look, see. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. Guys on the Twitter's at mailed underscore fuzz. Did I say that already? I'm done. Um, who oh, knows? I wasn't paying attention. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> this is Batman Month, people. Uh, you know, we'll be back next time with the Dark Knight, which you know is is as well respected as this film is. The Dark Knight's kind of one of the most well respected. It's, it's super- the Dark Knight. It speaks for itself. It may be the most well-respected superhero movie, so come back next time for shenanigans. So thank you very much once again. We'll see you guys next time. Keep watching movies. And if you can get it, it's always good to have diplomatic immunity.